What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Martian MMA Podcast. I am your host, The Martian, also known as John, here to talk about this week's UFC card going down this Saturday afternoon. UFC 308 headlined by Ilya Taporia versus Max Holloway for the UFC Featherweight Championship. And we also have a five round co main event in the Premier Division with former champion Bobby Knuckles, Robert Whittaker taking on Hamza Chemaev in a long awaited fight there. Just a top to bottom, really fun card. A lot of good fights in uh, this Abu Dhabi fight night. It's going down, or Abu Dhabi card, excuse me. Uh, starts at 10 a.m. Eastern time for the first fight on the prelims. The pay per view gets underway at 2 p.m at the Ethiad Arena where the Fight Island was and where we've had a few cards lately. And you got to be a little aware of this fight card and what the circumstances are pointing to, and that is that the favorites typically do pretty well on these cards. So in the past, I've, I've bet on too many underdogs, and it hasn't really worked out too well. And you got to be selective with your underdog money lines on this card because I looked into the past several um, Abu Dhabi cards. In the past 50 fights in Abu Dhabi since UFTC 267, uh, the favorites have gone 43-7. and There have been um, two no contests. But only seven underdogs out of 50 fights in the past five cards. The last one back in um, August of this year, the Sanhagen Umar card favorites went 12 and 1. And you can just pretty clearly see that the, the favorites are doing well on these cards. So that's something to consider here. You know, if you like a few underdogs in this card, let's say four or five underdogs, I think you should cut it down to two or three because historically these underdog money lines are just not coming through. And you got to you gotta respect the, the elements of, of this fight card. And that is that these fights are typically matched to favor either the Russian, the Dagestan, or the Middle Eastern fighters in some form. And... You got to be aware. So um, I do have some bets on the, this card, but I'm taking a little bit of a different approach um, than, than typical. So not as many underdogs. So um, we're going to get to that in a second. Last week, I think it was uh, just an all right week of predictions for me. I think I predicted a lot of the fights well, but didn't exactly highlight a ton of winning bets. I uh, didn't really endorse too many bets, but I would say they, you know, maybe uh, went maybe two and two or something like that. Melissa Martinez money line did come through early on. The Jocelyn Edwards takedown prop and the Jocelyn Edwards sub at ten to one came through. Um, predicted the Elias Reed fight well, the Matsumoto fight well, even though the the split decision prop missed on that one. I, I was happy with that bet, and uh, the Almabayev Elkins. Charles Johnson fights, even the main event, Hernandez over Pereira. I think I predicted them all well. Uh, Just missed the mark on some of the bets like Hernandez 2-3-4 or, um, you know, Phillips ITD. Uh, So just, uh, I would say, an average week of uh, of bets for me. But um, hopefully you were able to, you know, use some of the predictions I made to, to come up with some of your own winning bets there which is always uh, an objective here is that I'm, I'm talking about some bets that i'm making here and i'm perhaps recommending some bets but i'm also just giving out information and you can use that information and analysis to help you make your own bets as well so i hope everyone's doing that and uh, thank you all for listening and tuning into the podcast so we got 13 fights to go over this week and we're going to get into all of them talking about the bets for each and every one and we are starting things off and let's let's refresh topology just to make sure this is the, the current card okay Okay, we're starting things off in the welterweight division. Renat Fakhradinov taking on Carlos Leal. And be aware, this card has some of the craziest pronounced names uh, ever. So uh, I'm going to nail them all as usual. But we have Renat as the minus 220 favorite. Carlos Leal as the plus 185 dog. Leal making his UFC debut on short notice. He's a pretty proven fighter over in the PFL and LFA, uh, but is you know having to travel all the way across the world. He's has to make a welterweight on short notice, and he's taking on a really tough opponent in Renat as well. So I, I don't think Leal is going to get the job done. I just haven't seen um, what I need to see to back him here. And we've seen him defend some takedowns, but from like Ray Cooper, who's not really a predominant wrestler, and we just don't really know how Leal is going to deal with a relentless grappler like Renat. I think on the feed he'll he'll definitely hold his own. He has some heavy hands, but he's a little slow and clunky. He doesn't really throw the highest amount of strikes. So I just can't get behind Leal at this price. I think Renat um, and his grinding style, that nonstop takedowns is a tough style to beat, obviously. 
I don't think Leal is going to get destroyed. I think it'll probably hit the cards and be either a 29-28 or a 30-27 for Renat here. And I think this fight to go the distance is, is pretty reasonably priced at minus 175. I, I think that that is good. And um, I don't see too many finishes here, honestly. Uh, Renat's been kind of content to uh, grapple very heavily and not really hunt for finishes. And um, Leal's got some power in his hands, but I inevitably don't think he's going to be able to connect enough to, to really hurt and put out Fakhradinov. Fakhradinov should be shooting takedowns every time he gets hurt, and uh, it should be a Renat decision. So um, I think goes the distance. Minus 175 is the best bet there. I will uh, officially endorse that bet, and I'll pick Renat by decision. Uh, we're moving moving on to the Premier Division's first fight. Bruno Silva taking on Ismail Nardiev. Odds for this one have Nardiev as the favorite coming back to the UFC at minus 175. Bruno Silva plus 150. So this is one of the underdogs on the card I like. Um, possibly one of uh, one of three or four underdogs I like on the entire card. I'll say three, um, but this one I, I really do like, and... Nardiev, a former welterweight, he's left the UFC. He he got finished several times. He got knocked out three times. Uh, one of those being leg kicks. Well, he got finished three times. Excuse me, one by armbar, one by KO. But I I don't know, man. I don't think this guy is a, a proper. 185er. I don't think he's very durable. I just don't think he's a very good fighter at all, and I'm really confused why he's being bet so heavily here. I think if it stays in the feet, he's not going to look minus 175. And Bruno Silva doesn't have good takedown defense and good get up abilities, but he he's tough to hold down. He eventually will explode and try to get on top position. And his best attribute is probably his ground and pound, which led to him getting two of his only UFC victories, pounding out Wellington Terman and Andrew Sanchez after they failed taking him down. Those guys are like legit 185 sized guys with pretty good grappling backgrounds. And both of those guys tried it to take down Bruno. They had some success, but they inevitably ran out of steam and got finished. So it's dangerous to grapple Bruno Silva. And I think this line is significantly off, man. I, I like once Nardiev has left the UFC, I've seen nothing impressive from this guy to think that he's one improved or B should be, you know, this favorite at near 65% over Bruno Silva. And, uh, yeah, man, this line makes no sense to me. So I like Bruno Silva as an underdog bet here. Uh, money line worth at least a unit. And uh, yeah, I, I think that line's significantly off. And I think Bruno has a good chance to either hurt him and knock him out on the feet or do what I was saying earlier. And that is, um, you know, maybe escape or reverse some of the takedowns, land some good ground and pound. Um, and it, Bruno can actually hit his own double leg takedowns if he wants to. We saw that in the Shara fight that he can offensively wrestle pretty well and he always has bricks for hands. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I like Bruno there a lot. One of my favorite underdogs on the card. Moving on, Bantamweight division, Farid Basharat, Victor Hugo. Odds for this one have a huge favorite as Basharat minus 800, Victor Hugo plus 550. So um, Hugo is not really as bad as I once thought. I, I predicted his last fight very poorly, but this is a hard fight for me to envision him having success. He, he doesn't really have power in his strikes at all he's kind of a very soft striker so i don't see him posing much of a f threat for farid on the feet and i just think farid is a significantly better grappler than him victor hugo loves going for leg locks and knee bars and i just think that's a bad style for farid man i think farid a very well trained grappler he will easily avoid any of those leg locks or knee bars and they're just going to give up guard passes so let's say hugo gets taken down he's in guard he's going to go for a leg lock or something and then he's going to uh fail at it and he's going to get past and he's going to be in side control and you know be in risk uh, for, for either eating ground and pound or getting submitted and i think he will probably get finished in the second or third round here so i love like Basharat round two, 650. Basharat round three, 1200 on FanDuel. Spread a half unit between those two and uh, hope that uh, Farid can uh, drown him in the second or third. I, I do see it being submission most likely, but um, the, the ground and pound possibility is real enough for me to just take the second and third round props. And I think it's going to be very easy for Basharat. Let's just hope Hugo can make it a full round. And then he can cash that uh, that two three for us on Basharat. So we're moving on to another hilarious fight here in the heavyweight division. Chris Barnett taking on Kennedy and Zechuku. Odds for this one having Zechuku as a massive favorite minus nine hundred. Barnett coming back plus six hundred. Kennedy is a flawed fighter and he probably doesn't even belong at heavyweight. But but Chris Barnett. <laughs> possibly one of the most flawed fighters ever to make it in the UFC. And this guy 
is just horrible at MMA. The fact that he has two UFC wins is incredible. It speaks to the low level of the fat slobs at heavyweight like Jake Collier and John Vellante. But Kennedy is, man, he's going to be eight or nine inches taller. He, he's tall. He's long. He's going to be able to just snap punches in the face of, of Barnett the entire time. Barnett's a tough old guy. Um, so I like the fight to be a Kennedy sub at six to one. I think Barnett should be able to take some punches. He's going to maybe get, you know, leaned on in the clinch here. And then he's going to probably maybe give up the neck. We know Enzechuku has hit guillotines before. We know Barnett's been guillotined before by uh Ben Rothwell not too long ago in the UFC. So I'm kind of fading the KO for Enzechuku here. And let's just hope Barnett eats some punches. He either goes for a takedown or he starts giving up the neck, finding a way out. And uh, six to one on Kennedy and Zechiku is the bet I like on that fight. Moving on to another fight in the Premier Division. One of four fights in the Premier Division in this card. That's how you know it's going to be a good card. Abu Smagomedov taking on Bruno Ferreira. Odds for this one have... Abus is the favorite, minus 139. Ferreira coming back at plus 119. Well-matched fight here. And I'll be going with Abus to win this fight. I think he has a little more ways to win the fight. You know, both guys are, are skilled strikers and can offensively wrestle as well. But I just think Abus is a little more refined, especially in the grappling aspect. And he really proved that in his last fight. He had a, a tough debut or a, a tough couple of fights once he got in the UFC with Sean Strickland, Kyle Bohio. But he was, he was, you know, been able to prove that he's able to um, comprehensively outgrapple guys for three rounds. His cardio looked a lot better. His takedowns looked good. His top game looked good versus Warley Alves. Not a great opponent, but um, I think Bruno could have some problems with the grappling, especially the later this fight goes. Bruno, he's a heavy hitter. He's a wild striker early on, but he really doesn't have many wins out of the first round. I don't know if he, he doesn't have a, he has one win in the round two, six minutes in, um, over uh, Victor Neves, who I believe, no, different Neves. But yeah, he Victor Neves has one pro MMA fight. It was five years ago. He never fought again. So uh, Bruno has, oh, he actually has another one. Um, Ferreira, some guy, uh, round two, 12 seconds in. So he's never fought past six minutes, um, Bruno Ferreira. So I think the longer this fight goes, the more it should favor um, Abus Magomedov, and I think that uh, there's a good chance he uses his wrestling to outgrapple. He just has to weather the early storm, and I think that Abus is going to be looking pretty good in these later rounds. So I think Abus before the fight is good, and then this is a good spot to be looking to jump in on the, the live betting as well. And let me pull up what Abus round two, round three is because uh, whenever you have a guy who has never f really fought in rounds two and three, there's a great possibility this cardio is just absolutely atrocious. It's only six to one for round two, nine fifty for round three which aren't great um so i'll go ahead and pass on, on endorsing those late finish props for for magomedov but i think magomedov's money line is good and uh, i'll definitely be interested in the live line once we see with how abus is dealing with those big big swings those big combinations from from ferreira uh but i don't i don't know man i, I don't think ferreira is as hard of a hitter as he's been made out to be in his ufc career thus far he has, he does have all three wins by knockout but um those guys aren't really tough guys or excuse me well, robocop's a great fighter but he has you know a susceptible chin phil hall's worst chin of all time dustin stolfoot's not really a great fighter so um i just don't think those three fights really translate too well here and i think abus is gonna play it smart and mix in the wrestling get the win moving on to a, a fun fun fight in the lightweight division matabek world by mateus rebecki odds for this one have oral by minus 340 rebecki plus 280 Man, this line is getting a little out of hand uh, because I, at the end of the day, I do think it does have potential to be competitive. But, um, you know, I think Orobai is certainly the, the rightful favorite. Uh, but he's getting steamed. A lot of parlays, a lot of action coming in on Orobai. And I think it's gotten to the point where it, it, it has to be Rebecca your pass in terms of money line. But um, I'm not sure. I, I, I You know, both these guys don't have great cardio. But I think Matabek knows how to push through being a little tired better than Rebecca is. We saw Rebecca slow down in the, the Diego Ferreira fight, and he was just absolutely dead in the third round. And even the Nick Fior fight, uh, he wasn't going that hard in the early rounds, and he still slowed down. So I'm just kind of, you know, skeptical if Rebecca has the cardio to go hard for the full 15 minutes because he redlines, he, he goes hard, he throws a lot of strikes, he's aggressive, he wrestles heavily. 
but he can't really can sustain that for more than like seven to ten minutes. While Orobai does the same. Uh, I do think he's got a little more uh, power in his hands. Uh, Rebecca's a, a southpaw striker, likes throwing a lot more kicks. Orobai is more punch heavy, uh, but I do think or- Orobai's boxing is solid. He does have some power in his hands, and uh, I think he has a more comprehensive uh, grappling game that, where he can actually land the takedowns and do something with it. And uh, I think the car, the cardio advantage, should be uh, a big factor here, and that's why I'm leaning with Orobai to to win the fight via decision. And um, that is, I, I would imagine, the most likely outcome here is is oral buy by decision. It is at uh, plus one fifty, but um, I think it's I think it's good. And it's another fight where I think the fight going the distance is a good look here. The fight going the distance is is even money, and I think it's going to be a lot of grappling. I think both guys kind of slow down a little bit in the third round. And Carlos Diego Ferreira, like he has historically incredible cardio, so. That's why he was able to really put it on Rebecca and finish him in the third. But I'm not sure Orobai will have that same aggression in the later rounds here to, to, to hunt that finish. So I think it'll be an Orobai decision. And um, I like goes the distance here as well. We are uh, moving on to Jeff Neal and uh, Rafael Dos Anjos in the welterweight division. Uh, to this one have Neal minus 280 RDA plus 240. And another fight where I like goes the distance. I, I bet at minus 135. I think that was, quite frankly, a, a crazy line. And it's still available at minus 150. And I just, I think that they're way overrating Jeff Neal KO here. It's it's in the, the, 200, the 200s now. Um, actually, some books still have it 175. I just think that Neal getting a KO here one out of every three times is way too much equity for Jeff Neal. Um, Rafael Dos Anjos has never been knocked out at welterweight he's only been knocked out uh you know three times in his entire career eddie alvarez uh jeremy stevens and i I forget the one before that i think it might have been um oh clay guida um so but those those two fights were literally 14 years ago 16 years ago the only time he's been knocked out in the past decade was at 155 so i think being at 170 here should be uh, a good thing for rda being able to absorb the damage and i think rda is going to be looking to, to clinch a lot here in the luke fight we saw him um clinch a lot man i mean he was having success at striking range in that fight and he would still shoot a takedown and go to the clinch and i think that that's where the fight will kill some time uh i do think jeff neal should win the fight via decision uh, but i'm just fading this fight um to go, to finish inside the distance uh, so even if uh, rda somehow gets a takedown on on jeff neal i don't think jeff neal is going to get you know easily submitted like some of the guys like brian barberina or you know Neil Magny did back in the day at what 170. Uh, so I think that one that one's hitting the cards. I think it'll be a, a, a competitive spar in some senses, and I think Jeff Neal will probably get his hand raised by decision. But I'm not interested in Neil at minus 300. I, I definitely don't like that bet. Um, you know, it's been a while. It's been over two years since Jeff Neal's got a win in the UFC. Um, so he needs this one badly. I think he probably will get it done. Uh, but the only bet I like there is the fight to go the distance. Moving on to the last fight on the prelims. Kind of an interesting choice to put this fight that late on the prelims. We have Rafael Cercaria uh, taking on Ibo Aslan. Cercaria uh, is now the favorite in this one. At, i got to pull the odds up. Minus 130, Ibo Aslan plus 110. This is a, a f- very high variance fight. There's really virtually no footage of Sicaria. Um, there's a, f- a few foot minutes of him, you know, knocking out some low level guys, but we really have no clue what quality of fighter this guy is. And Ibo Aslan, not that much different. I mean, we have a little more footage of Ibo, but I still think it's kind of hard to make what the guy's skill skill set actually is. We know he's not a great grappler. Uh, he's improving in that area, but still probably very susceptible susceptible to being outgrappled. Uh, but the guy throws hammers. He throws big, you know, looping shots, and uh, he did well sustaining some of that power late into the uh, to the fight versus um, the Swedish guy, Turkelidge. Got in the knockout in the third round. Won the first two rounds, in my opinion, with by just landing the bigger punches. But uh, Turkelidge is kind of a punching bag, so that was a good matchup for him. So this is a rightful, you know, near pick'em coin flip type of fight. And considering we know a little bit more about Ebo, 
I think going at plus money now it's at plus 110 I, I would say he's the side hopefully it continues to blow out like right now Ebo, I do think he's a side but I'm not you know rushing to place a, a bet on him but if it gets up to maybe plus 120 25 30 I think we're, our hand is going to be forced and we're going to have to play Ebo there and what should be just a wild uh fight where both guys are very likely to knock each other out um, Ebo definitely is more hands. Sercaria seems to throw a good amount of kicks, and he's he's going to be a lot longer and taller here. Um, so that could provide some problems with Ebo. But Ebo likes getting d- dirty. He likes like, being aggressive and getting inside the pocket. Actually, I was I was wrong somehow. Same height, and Ebo has an inch of reach. So, uh, yeah, man, uh, should be a wild one there. Maybe that's they're just banking on that one just being a crazy early knockout. That's why they're putting it right before the pay-per-view main card. And we are on to the five fight main card here where we have starting things off in the premier division, Shara Magomedov taking on Armin Petrosian odds for this one have Shara as the favorite minus 158 Armin Petrosian plus 138. This is a fight where I I'm trying to be a little more refined because I, I do, I have been betting against Magomedov several times thus far. All pretty much all three of his fights. I've been trying to fade the guy and, uh, I'm just not sure this is really the the type to do it because if you really had to tailor make an opponent to beat Shara, it would be a grappler. We know the guy is bad at, at defending takedowns. We know he goes full guard and he really sucks on bottom. So Armin Petrosian is the furthest thing from a grappler. So they're really not giving him a tough matchup here. But it's possible that Armin can still just keep this standing and, and outstrike Shara by having the superior striking skill. I do think it should be a competitive striking decision. These guys apparently have known each other in the past. I think they're both not exactly the hardest hitters, and they're very content to, to go the full 15 minutes. Especially Armin. Armin is not a hard hitter at all. And I think Shara's power has been largely overrated throughout his uh, his career as well. So this one seems a very likely to hit the cards here. Um, I think this one... Uh, I mean, it's it, the fa- the fight is favored to go the distance at near seventy percent. I think that's accurate. I did take the fight to end by split here uh, at plus three hundred. Uh, should be a competitive decision, and uh, who knows how the judging is going to look on this card? Who knows if there's going to be any sort of uh, bias for Magomedov? But Petrosian is also from you know the Caucasus region, uh, Armenia, I believe. So he could get some some favorable judging. Who who really knows? I just envision this one being a competitive decision. And whenever that's the case, I think three to one on the GTD or the split is a good way to play the fight. And uh, hopefully Armin gets it done. I would like to see that. However, if Shara wins and he keeps the ball rolling, he's just going to continue to gain more hype and, and, you know, people are going to overrate him. And then eventually when he faces a grappler, he's going to get taken down and, and destroyed. Uh, Like we've already seen, like Bruno Silva, uh, you know, had a ton of success taking him down and holding him down. So uh, I'll, I'll be passing on Norman Petrosian money line. Don't knock a play on it, but I'm not taking it myself. I like the fight to end split. We're moving on to the light heavyweight division, Magomed Ankalaev, Alexander Rakic. Magomed Ankalaev favored minus 385. Rakic coming back plus 310. I like this fight to go the distance. <laughs> We're noticing a trend here. I like uh, this is uh, a bit what I'm talking about is that um, like Rakic at 300 is probably a little wide. However, I don't actually have faith in this guy to actually pull off the win. And I think this fight is awfully likely to hit the card, certainly more likely than just past 61% where the odds put it. And uh, I I like goes the distance here. Minus 160 is certainly worth a bet. And it's it's still at that price on on several books. So I think you should be able to get in on that. And Ankalaev, I just think this he definitely navigates towards going to the decision um, that the fighters that he's finished tend to be pretty bad fighters like Kudalaba and Johnny Walker. And then when he's faced with, you know, decent guys around Rakic's level, like Krilov, like Ozdemir, uh, like even Tiago Santos, uh, Jan Blahovic, that was a five round fight. Those fights all hit the cards. And uh, I think that, that that's what's going to happen here is it's going to be a slightly competitive, but Magomed's probably going to do a little bit more, land the takedowns, and uh, and win this one in, in very, very boring fashion. And this fight, I think, is going to prove, uh, you know, there's some, there's some 
I'll, I'll call them dumbasses out there that are actually outraged that Ankalaev gets skipped over for a title shot by uh, Khalil Roundtree. Meanwhile, I think this fight's going to prove that, well, you know, even though there's there's a laundry list of proof that, uh, that Ankalaev is boring, but this fight will once again put it in people's minds that this guy is just a total boring fighter. There's no intrigue behind him fighting Alex Pereira. Who gives a fuck if he's the alleged number one contender? Um, I, I don't want to see him fight uh, uh, Pereira. And Roundtree versus Pereira was fantastic. So so there's no reason to complain. Um, and Ray Kitch, yeah, I, I don't know. The guy's just kind of a wimp in my opinion. Uh, it's been a while since he's, he's won a fight. He had the leg injury versus uh, Jan Blachowicz. Um, he, you know, was beaten up Jiri, but just couldn't sustain it and has, you know, no power to really deter Jiri. And then his past few fights before that, Tiago Santos, Anthony Smith, those were just boring clinch fests where he was riding the guy against the cage, knee in the legs, totally boring, horrible fights. And I don't see that working versus Ankalaev. I imagine the fight's going to have a lot of clinching. I think Ankalaev will probably hit a takedown or two. And Ankalaev will win a boring decision here. So um, that is the pick. Moving on to the Komian event. Uh, time to get into the good fights. The really, really good fights. Can't wait to talk about these two. Hamza Chemaev taking on Robert Whitaker. Five five-minute rounds in the Komian event. Hamza Chemaev is favorite at minus 240. Robert Whitaker is coming back at plus 205. So, um, you know, this is kind of... The inconsistent guy versus the consistent guy. Robert Whitaker has been a champion. Uh, you know, he, he won his first title in the UFC in, I believe, 2016. I think he won the interim title. Um, yep, he won. No, he won the interim title in 2017. Um, but, you know, just a, a stud, stud fighter. Great guy. Great fighter. So well-rounded. He's a fantastic boxer. He's a good kicker. He's a great defensive wrestler, possibly one of the greatest defensive wrestlers to ever fight in the UFC. And uh, certainly north of 155 pounds, I would say he's, he's probably the best defensive wrestler ever. Um, maybe you could throw John Jones in that conversation. Um, but, uh, and then you have Hamzat, who has destroyed pretty much everyone he's fought, with the exception of Kamaru Usman. But the guy is wildly inconsistent. He has a tough time, you know, making weight. He has all these health problems. He's just been super inconsistent over the past few years. Um, only has one fight in the past two calendar years. It was versus Usman. It was only a majority decision. I really think everyone kind of had the same opinion that Usman that. Chemayev probably got a 10-8 in the first round, and then Usman probably won the second or third round. It should have likely been a draw. The judges didn't see it that way. But, I mean, I think that performance was horrible from Chemayev because what did that fight prove? He destroyed somebody in round one in the grappling, and then his cardio and his striking fell apart, and he got outboxed in the second and third round. We learned nothing new about Hamza Chemayev, and we learned that even though Usman is an incredible fighter, former champion, great fighter, and he was undersized in that fight, uh, we learned that that Chemayev really couldn't even dominate him, especially past a round. The guy's cardio is simply not good. It's not reliable. So the fact that this is a five-round fight and he's fighting Whitaker, who is the best boxer he's ever fought. He's fighting Whitaker, who has the best takedown defense of anybody he's ever fought. And it's the longest fight of his career. It's scheduled for five five-minute rounds. He's been scheduled for that before, I think, uh, versus uh, Kevin Holland. Oddly enough, that fight went two minutes. So, And when you factor in the, the all of the questions about Chemayev, how is he going to look in the later rounds? How is his takedowns going to hold up against a guy with great takedown defense? How is his striking defense going to hold up against a great boxer? And you throw in all these health issues he's had the past few years, the inconsistency. I don't understand how anybody could be confident in Chemayev at 70%. And I think Bobby Whitaker is certainly the side here. He's the good guy in the fight. You know, Chemayev is a, you know, a scumbag who looks up to, to dictators and, and Kadyrov, just an absolutely horrible, annoying personality. Meanwhile, Robert Whitaker, one of the coolest guys ever in MMA. So you, you, I might be betting and some other guys might be betting a little bit with their, their hearts in this one, but I still think that there's certainly enough evidence to justify Robert Whitaker being the correct side here, two to one. 
And then you also have to uh, be aware of the live bet. If Whitaker is getting taken down and out grappled early, we know that Chemayev is unlikely to sustain that too long. And then you also have to probably look at the, the Whitaker 3-4-5 KO props or maybe Whitaker 4-5 decision, which I believe is is at four, plus 470 on FanDuel. Let's pull these lines up. So we got... Um, Let's see here. Whitaker, 4-5 decision, 380. It got bet a little bit. And then uh, Whitaker, let's see. Where's the 4-5? 3-4-5. Let's see. Whitaker, 3, 19-1, 4, 19-1, 5, 22-1. So you see they're very they're very aware that those 3-4-5 props are possible here. That's why they're so closely um, you know, bunched together around those prices. You typically see a much wider spread on those 3-4-5 props. Let me check out uh, DK real quick before you move on. But Robert Whitaker is certainly the side here, is certainly endorsing him for a bet. Yeah, same thing, 18, 20, 22 on 3-4-5 there. So uh, I still think you, you probably should be taking them because, you know, Robert or Robert Whitaker is so proven in five round fights. He has been in probably 10 five rounders, if I had to guess. Um, I don't know what the official number is, but he's been scheduled for five so many times. He's gone the full five so many times. He's won a lot of those five round fights. Um, I think pretty much, I believe every time he's seen a five round decision, he's won, right? Yeah, he is. Uh, 2-0 against Yo Romero, Darren Till, Cannoneer, Gastelum, Vittori. Yeah, so all six times his fights have gone the full five rounds. He's 6-0 and in those decisions. So, the man, a lot of, lot of advantages here for Robert Whitaker. I'm a historic Hamza Chemaev hater, historic Bobby Whitaker uh, lover, and for Bob to, to win this fight would be absolutely electric, and let's hope it happens, and let's hope we can get paid a plus 200 for doing so. Also, look out for live bets. Look out for three, four, five props on uh, Bobby Knuckles. Moving on to the main event, featherweight division, former champion Max Holloway taking on current champion Ilya Tapuria, and the odds for this one have Max Holloway, or excuse me, Taporia as the favorite, minus 230. Holloway coming back as the plus 195 dog. What a fight. Probably the best fight in MMA right now. Um, I can't wait for, for Davis and Figueredo versus Peter Yan next month. But of all the fights you could possibly book in the UFC right now or in MMA right now, I think this is probably the most intriguing one. Um, you have Max Holloway coming off of one of the greatest knockouts ever being one of the greatest fighters ever and then you have you know the young up-and-comer Ilya Taporia who just was the first guy to knock out Taporia or, one, or excuse me to knock out Volkanovsky at 145 he's been on a tear his confidence is incredible he's a phenomenal boxer he has tremendous power he's a really good grappler as well that he doesn't get to show off too much and you know Taporia is a really really special great fighter but it begs the question is is he proven enough to warrant being a 70% favorite over Max Holloway? That is a very, very bold question. Now, some factors to consider here is that Max, his last fight was at 155. He is going down to 145 again. And um, he's still 4-1 and one in his past five at, at 145. Uh, but you got to imagine the, the weight has to be a little tougher for him to, to make at this point. Uh, but I think, of course, he will do it. He's a consummate professional. I, I think there's no way that Max misses weight here and he will make it and it's just a matter of uh will we possibly see um that weight cut take effect on him in this fight even though i don't believe we've ever seen it to this day um it's possible and um you know he has also absorbed the most strikes in ufc history i believe so there's always the question is will will his chin fall off um we, he's never been knocked out never been dropped and actually no i think i think technically justin gaethje dropped him in the last fight uh no no they didn't give it to him um but I mean, that last fight still proved that Max Holloway is just as good as he ever was. Um, he was the underdog in that fight. He won decisively. And I got to go with Max Holloway here, man. I, I uh, Taporia has been a guy who has fights I've predicted wrong 
in the past pretty often pretty much most of them i haven't predicted too well um, but the guy continues to to, to uh you know impress and, and shock me and he, he i do respect him I, I acknowledge that he's a fantastic fighter however uh, he's only been in one five round fight similar to what i was saying about the last fight max holloway's experience in five round fights is just unworldly um he did lose the the three um decisions to alexander volkanovsky and he did lose to dustin poirier via decision at 155 but still his record in in, in 145 five round fights is incredible um he's never lost a five round fight at 145 um to anybody besides alexander volkanovsky and uh i just think that this fight is going to be a competitive striking fight where Ilya Taporia has the bigger power advantage the bigger one shot potential but the volume the cardio the activity the pressure the combinations that max holly puts on you are just incredibly difficult to deal with and we've seen good boxers at 145 calvin cater arnold allen those guys are just absolutely outmatched and 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 really can't really, couldn't really touch max holloway i believe arnold allen won maybe a round in that fight the fifth round i think but um it's just Alexander Volkanovsky is is a special fighter, a great striker, and he was able to get the best of of Holloway in their three fights. But it's hard to really pick anybody to outstrike Max Holloway, and I won't be picking Ilya Tapori to do it here. I will be picking Max Holloway to pull off the upset to win the fight as the underdog, and hopefully, um, you know, pull off uh, one of the one of the great stories in MMA, which would be for him to get his belt back. I believe right now it would be the longest gap between a male ufc champion losing the belt and getting a belt uh, getting the back belt back i believe that's a stat i saw just under five years since he lost the, uh, the belt to volkanovsky if he can get that belt back it would be a special moment and um certainly the the, the fan favorite fighter here so I'm going with a little similar, uh, you know, narratives in both of these, uh, the, the five round fights is that you have the more, um, the younger, more up and coming fighter, the more, uh, the higher finishing potential fighter with, with Chemaev and Ilya Taporia, but their five round experience is, is a little less proven. And, um, I'm going with the more proven, the old, the older fighter, the former champions in both fights, um, and that will be Robert Whitaker, Max Holloway. Love those two guys as the two to one underdogs. Uh, those are the the two underdogs I endorse on the card. I also endorse Bruno Silva. That will be the third underdog I fully endorse. And um, just going top to bottom real quick again. I'll pick I'll pick Max by decision. By the way, forty eight forty seven decision. I think Taporia will win maybe um, one of the early rounds, maybe one of the late rounds. But Max will probably win the the majority of the last fifteen minutes. And uh, Man, I you gotta say though, if Taporia is somehow able to knock Max Holloway out and be the first guy to to knock him out, the first guy to finish him at at uh, 145 since Poirier over 10 years ago, it would be absolutely incredible and would put him probably uh, right next to Pereira as the fighter of the year. Knocking out Volkanovski and Holloway in the same year would be a tremendous achievement. So it's a it's an incredible fight. Well done by the UFC for putting these two guys together. And oh, I skipped the fight. Fuck, man! I did this. I did this last week. I forgot to do it again. Man, fuck. Um, Leroy Murphy, Dan Ige. I'll make it quick. Um, I just don't trust Dan Ige's initiative and his output here. Uh, I think Leroy Murphy will be a little more. Um, higher output uh murphy had proved me wrong in the last fight versus barbosa his striking his boxing looked really really good in that fight and i just i think that dan Ige has trouble um narrowing the gap in some of these fights where he's in these fights but he just doesn't quite throw enough he doesn't you know show enough initiative and aggression and i think that leroy murphy is just going to beat him to the punch be a little quicker here throw and land more strikes on his way to a decision and i think um the price is a tad wide but i never really think we're looking at a leroy murphy decision there so i would recommend passing on dan Ige. uh but it would be cool to see dan get the win sorry for going out of order there so the um the bets i like on this car will go from the main event down i like max holloway money line i like robert whitaker money line I like the Ankalaev Rikic fight to go the distance. I like the Magomedov Petrosian fight to end by split decision. I like Jeff Neal Rafael de Sanjos to go the distance. I like Oral by Rebecca to go the distance. I like Abus Magomedov money line, Kennedy and Zechiku submission, Farid Basharat round two, round three. 
um, the Renat Fakhradinov Carlos Leal fight to go the distance, um, Bruno Silva money line. And fuck it, I'll, I'll go ahead and throw Ibo Aslan money line at, at plus money in there as well as probably the least confident bet on the card, but I'll, I'll throw it in with the with the endorsed wagers there. So a lot of action on this card. I like the fights. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, hopefully at least one of Whitaker or, or Holloway will win. It would be extremely depressing, in my opinion, if um, Chemayev and Taporia won and um you know, we just, let's just hope some of the underdogs in this card win. Nobody wants to see, you know, the favorites go 11 and 2, 12 and 1. Let's get some underdogs coming through and add some excitement to our lives. So that's going to do it. Go Bobby Knuckles. Go Max Bless Holloway. Let's get the job done and let's see some new champions here. So, well, actually, the, the Whitaker fight isn't even a championship fight, but, um, that'll do it hope you all enjoy the podcast hope you're all able to get some good information hope you all enjoy the fights and win some bets this weekend i will see you all before the next ufc event next week peace out everyone